August Hoch was one of the most significant pioneers in automotive history. In their time, his limousines and sport convertibles were unsurpassed for luxury, and the August Hoch Museum in Zwickau serves as a tribute to this unconventional and brilliant engineer. He created an automotive legend, and his ingenuity and influence still live on today. Here we have the oldest vehicle in our exhibition, the Hoch Phaeton from 1911, to be exact, with a 3.2-litre engine. This motor car is the visitor's first impression and prime specimen in the museum's collection. Only ten years earlier, almost everyone drove in carriages, a trend that is reflected in the Hoch Phaeton's wooden wheels and mudguards, which are reminiscent of a horse and cart. The same goes for the running boards, for the petrol cans, and the gas feed for the headlights, and also the fact that the steering wheel was on the right, so the driver could always keep an eye on the roadside ditch. The exterior handbrake and gear shift are also more reminiscent of a carriage than a car. And here we have the oldest Audi represented in the museum, the Type B, which was constructed in 1911 in this building. This is the vehicle that August Hoch drove in the famous Alpenfahrt rally. The Alpenfahrt course was the most difficult Alpine test of its time. It is comparable to today's World Rally Championship. August Hoch won Alpenfahrt in the Type B three times in a row and only two years after its founding, establishing the motorsport foundation for which Audi is still renowned today. But why did Hoch build an Audi? In 1909, the uncompromising engineer left his own company because of differences of opinion with his business partners, only to found a new factory in the same year. But the fledgling automotive company had one fundamental problem. It didn't have a name. The rights to Hoch still rested with the original company. So, August Hoch and his old friend and financier, Franz Fikensche, took inspiration from Fikensche's ten-year-old son, Heinrich, a studious pupil of Latin, who had a brilliant idea. Audi? Hoch is the imperative form of the German verb to listen, and its Latin equivalent is Audi. At the beginning of the 20th century, in automotive production, a lot of manual labor and heavy machinery was used. And in the 1920s, the machines were still being operated using transmission. Electric individual drive did not come into use until the beginning of the 1930s. And the quantity of the vehicles that were being produced only amounted to a few hundred a year. Despite this, from the very beginning, August Hoch adopted the highest quality and technical innovations for both the Hoch brand and later for Audi as well. Vorsprung durch Technik in its early stages. We are now in the mechanical assembly, the heart of the factory in those days. This is where everything was turned, milled, machined, sawed and stamped. These are the types of machines that created the proverbial precision at Hoch and Audi in those days, producing with an accuracy of up to a thousandth of a millimeter. That was the prerequisite in order to create motors of Hoch quality, motors that were renowned for their silence, that didn't even cause a five-mark coin set on edge to fall when idling. Hoch automobiles were of superlative quality, and from 1927 the vehicles were only built with eight and twelve cylinders, setting new standards in the fields of motor mechanics and performance. They were among the most comfortable cars, and instead of using conventional automotive designers, artists were commissioned to create designs for the vehicles, resulting in saloon cars and cabriolets that were possibly the most beautiful motor cars of their time, and even with substantial trade prices, which would equate to around 150 to 200,000 euros today, as with this Hoch 853 convertible, Hoch was still able to dominate the luxury car market in 1930s Germany, with a market share of an impressive 55%.
This is a petrol station from the period of the 20s and 30s, a very important time. Audi was already transferring its steering from the right to the left in 1921 and was thus a pioneer in Germany. But other important technical highlights as well, like the oil filter which contributed substantially to the life of the engine and various other innovations were developed. On the whole, however, things were on the decline by the middle of the 1920s. After the Great Depression began, in 1929, there was no longer a market for big engines and motor cars. This, of course, led to ever more companies in desperate states and to the founding of the Auto Union here in Saxonia. The merging of DKW, Wanderer, Audi and Hoch into the Auto Union strengthened these brands that would otherwise not have been able to survive the depression. Strategically intelligent, each brand served its own segment. DKW built small cars, Wanderer mid-range vehicles, Audi assumed the executive mid-range and Hoch provided for the luxury segment. And by 1937, the strategy had paid off with every fourth vehicle in Germany being an Auto Union product. But the days of saloons and convertibles with their sophisticated 8 and 12 cylinder engines were numbered. Hoch sensed that an era was coming to an end and that it was probably never going to come back. The Great Depression in the late 1920s was just the first drawback. The impending World War II marked the beginning of the end for this golden automotive era. With the end of World War II came the end of the glorious history of the Auto Union, with its four brands, Audi, DKW, Hoch and Wanderer. At the August Hoch Museum, we are of course delighted that the Audi brand was continued in West Germany and was revitalized in 1965, setting off on the path to renewed success. As is well known, this brand is celebrating its 100th birthday this year, and we would like to offer our congratulations on this occasion. With an incredible sense for innovation, the courage to take risks, and an entrepreneurial spirit, August Hoch left his mark in automotive history. A mark that has resulted in the premium brand of Audi. Today, Hoch is a legend. And as they say, legends never die.